Hello everyone! Today I'm sharing with you all of the books I acquired in October. This is my biggest book haul yet, I think. I think I have 30 plus books this month. <sighs> I don't know where I'm gonna put them all, but I have them, so here we go. I did buy quite a few books the normal this month. I also acquired a ton from publishers because a lot of publishers are ramping up for their 2019 releases, so I have a lot of 2019 books to share with you. Not a ton of intro. Also, I apologize if I don't go into detail about a lot of these books because there are a ton of books, so I can't spend the time I really want to on them because it'll be a forever long. Please accept my apology as I don't talk about all these a ton. Let's get into it. So like I said, I bought like six or seven books this month, which is a lot for me. May not be a lot for you. I'm a very money conscientious person when it comes to books, even though I want to buy them all. But yeah, I bought six. The first one, obviously, I have to talk about is this behemoth of a book right here. This is Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Maas. This is the seventh and final book in the Throne of Glass series. I'm very, very excited for this. I did not know that this book is 980 pages. What? This is like massive. It's huge. It's this is the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition, so it has a poster on the inside of the cover, which I will quickly show you, which I adore. That is what it looks like. If I'm honest with you, I was gonna get the Target edition because it was cheaper, but my Target didn't have it, so here we are. <laughs> but either way, if you don't know about Throne of Glass, I'm sure a lot of you guys do. Yes, it is problematic, I understand, but I'm just excited to see how this is gonna end. Like I'm ex I'm happy that it's gonna end because it's been such a long series, but yeah, I'm nervous for it to end too because I don't know how it's going to end. But either way, I'm going to start this very soon. It's going to take me literally forever to read. Next up, I bought another Taylor Jenkins Reid book and that is Forever Interrupted. If you didn't know, Taylor Jenkins Reid is now one of my new favorite authors because I've read three of her books this year, like in the past three months, and given them all a five out of five. So yeah, automatic favorite author for me. This is all about a girl named Elise, a regular 20-something, and then she meets a guy named um, Ben... Yes, and then she meets a guy named Ben and they fall in love very quickly like, within a span of weeks and then within a few months they are already married and Ben suddenly gets hit by a car, I believe, and yeah, he's killed on impact. So basically this is about her dealing with that. Like she also has to meet Ben's mother who Ben never even told her about. So it's all about grief and dealing with that, dealing with the one that you loved and, you know, a whirlwind love at that. And I believe it has flashbacks as well. I love Taylor Jenkins Reid's books. They always have a little tinge of sadness to him. This one I think sounds the most sad out of all of her books because it is about someone dying, but I'm excited to read it because her books, yes, are sad, but they always give me some sense of warmth too as well. I am planning to read all of her books and her newest one coming out next year and then do an author-related video because, yeah, I'm obsessed with her now pretty much. Next book I bought is Spark of Light by Jodi Picoult. I always say her name wrong. I apologize. Jodi Picoult is author I have loved since I was like 14. The first book I ever read from her was My Sister's Keeper, which is just holy crap. Should I have read that when I was 14? Probably not because it was super sad. Ever since then, I've really enjoyed her books. I've read a good majority of them. Some I don't read because I know it's going to be like so full of sadness that I can't just handle, but I do read a lot of them. This is her newest one and it is going to be, and it is going to be a heart wrencher for sure. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself, but I am. This is about a woman's clinic and somebody goes in and holds all the women in there hostage. And then we have a police like chief or something, a hostage negotiator come in and learn that his daughter is actually in the women's clinic along with a sister. So basically this book is told I think in a span of a day and yeah Jodi Bacolt writes very hard-hitting novels. Very interested and excited to read it but I just have to prepare my heart. I'm gonna try to read it next month. Hopefully it'll go good. It's probably gonna make me sob but I love the way she writes. It's just stunning. So I highly recommend if you haven't read a Jodi Bacolt novel do so. She's got like so many to choose from like any topic you want probably she's written about. The next few are books I have bought and I actually have already read and the first one is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Torton. This is an adult mystery thriller. Think of a mixture of the movie Clue and Groundhog Day. So in this book we follow a main character named Aiden. And Aiden wakes up in a body that is not his own and he's in this manor and he is kind of living in a purgatory. And basically he has to solve the death of Evelyn Hardcastle to get out of this rut, to get out of this rotation that he is in. And the only thing different, as well as if that's not already different enough, every day, because he gets seven chances pretty much to solve this murder, he wakes up at a different body of somebody else in the manor. So that is what this whole book is about. Definitely a whodunit mystery. Unfortunately, I did not love this book. This book has been getting tons of five-star ratings on Goodreads. I did not love it because I thought it was very confusing. And I'd say if you're a big murder mystery fan like Agatha Christie, it's where you have to take a paper out and like write all the characters down and where they were at what time and what room. This is a 
great book for you. Unfortunately, it wasn't for me, so don't let that deter you at all. But yeah, I bought that and I already read it. Another book I bought and I've already read is The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. This is basically a Frankenstein retelling involving a character named Elizabeth who gets very involved with Victor and you can guess what happens from there. I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. I'd say if you're just a huge fan of Frankenstein, read it, check it out. But otherwise, I think it's just a great Halloween read. I didn't really get a ton out of it, but I'm happy that I read it because it's the perfect time to read it. And the last book I bought that I have already read is The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. So this is the graphic novel, which is, I think, kind of what the Netflix show is based upon. I read this first bookathon. I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. I think what's the best thing about this um, book is the imagery the drawings are beautiful they're gory they're just great for like that deep dark sabrina that you want i mean goodness look at that but overall like it didn't wow me or anything like that i didn't really feel a connection with sabrina i loved the ending of it that was really good but do i think it's important to read this before the netflix original Mm, I don't know because I don't think they're really going along with what's exactly in this book. They're taking a different turn. So those are all the books I bought. Now for my biggest pile yet is the books I got sent by publishers. The first stack is a huge stack from Simon Teen. The first one is one of my most, if not my most anticipated read of 2019. I know you're gonna think it's crazy, but I am really excited for this book. And that is Slayer by Kirsten White. This is a book set in Buffyverse, aka Buffy the Vampire Slayer. If you don't know, that's one of my favorite shows of all time. It was my first favorite show ever growing up. I obsessed over Buffy when I was 12. Through, I see the ages of 12 through 17, I was like a diehard Buffy fan. Like I had all the watcher's guides, I had the script book, I had, I wrote my own like fan fiction and Way. like I was just Buffy everything so the same excited about this would be a vast understatement so I don't know much about this other than that Buffy I don't think is in it it's mainly about Nina and her twin sister Artemis and they are in the Watcher Academy and things like that I don't want to know much going into it I just want us to know that it's set in the Buffy world and I am okay with that because I just uh, anything Buffy in my life is anything good so super excited to read this it comes out in January so if you're a Buffy fan keep your eyes peeled I'm definitely gonna read this in January because I have to Buffy the rest of the books they sent me I don't know much about so forgive me on that and the first one is girls with sharp sticks by Suzanne Young I believe this is all about like a boarding school and they I don't know much about it. It says some of the prettiest flowers have the sharpest thorns. I don't know much about this book other than I think girls like kind of break the mold of the boarding school and what they're supposed to do. So that sounds really interesting. Sorry, I don't know much about any of these. Then I have The Cold is in Her Bones by Peter Nell Van Arsdale. Well, I've never heard of this author, so it might be a debut. This one again, I don't know, but I do know on the back it says, Mila knows two things to be true. Demons are real and fear will keep her safe. So she lives on this isolated farm and, um, the village that she lives in is cursed by a demon who possesses girls at random. Now it seems it comes from for Iris, which is a new girl that comes into this village. And Mila leaves her home to save her only friend and to break the curse forever. So it sounds very interesting. It sounds like... I don't even know, like The Village maybe? I don't know, it sounds awesome. They have Crown of Feathers by Nikki Paul Preto, which I don't know much about as well, I'm sorry. It says, I had a sister once, I promised her the throne would not come between us, but it is a fact of life that one must kill or be killed, rule or be ruled. Sometimes the title queen is given, sometimes it must be taken. So this one might be a sister feud. The cover looks like an epic fantasy, so that sounds awesome. And the last book they sent me is Sky Without Stars by Jessica Brody and Joanne Rendell. This is a huge book and a beautiful book. I'm gonna guess it's sci-fi. This book is like over 500 pages, which is quite lengthy for a YA book. I don't know much about this one. A thief, an officer, a guardian, all from different backgrounds, but sharing one same destiny. So I think it's about a planet who was founded 500 years after the last day. So and whispers of a revolution has begun. So that sounds amazing as well. This one doesn't even come out till March, so holy crap. And it also sent me another book, and that is Light as a Feather by Zoe Arson. This is a Hulu original series now, which I had no clue about the book, nor the Hulu original, so I'm very behind on the times. This is like on the take of the game, Light as a Feather, Stiff as a Board, which I've also never heard of that game. I'm just living under a rock, guys, pretty much. Don't mind me. Um, this is like all about this game and I think basically there's a new girl and they go to the graveyard one night and the girl, the new girl guesses how each of them are gonna die or something and then the next day one of them ends up dead in the same way that new girl said. So basically it's like, what the crap is happening? So I'd say this is kind of like 
a Sarah Shepard novel, if you will. It sounds like Pretty Little Liars mixed with a little bit of The Perfectionist, which are two series by her, which I enjoyed The Perfectionist a ton, so I might have to check this one out. If you have read this book, let me know, or if you've watched the show, let me know as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts on both of them. Today I just got in the mail, wasn't even expecting this book right here from Penguin Random House. This is Stranger Things Worlds Turned Upside Down. This is the official behind the scenes companion. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. I'm sure a lot of people's because it's amazing and just is full of pictures, really cool guides to each character, probably different episodes, the upside down and everything like that. So it sounds like it's like it looks amazing. It's definitely like one of the coolest like TV companion books I've ever seen so I cannot wait to read this more and it's gonna get me like they even have an upside down section as you can see like everything's upside down so you have to turn around because of the upside down but either way I can't wait to read this when the new season comes out if it ever comes out I need season three to come out like now like now. Then I have Until the Last Star Fades by Jacqueline Middleton. This is an adult contemporary novel and I'm really excited about this. She also wrote the London Belongs to Me duology. I'm just calling it a duology. Um, and I really enjoyed that. I think it's just a like a light easy read but it's got a little bit of depth to it which are some of my favorite reads for adult books i don't know why i just like books that i can just have a good time reading this is all about a girl named riley who is a senior in her um who is a senior at nyu and she's like doing really good and it says with a loving mother who makes lorelei gilmore look like a parenting slacker she must be a really good mother then because lorelei gilmore is like up there um it, she basically is doing really good and she I think she struggles with a heartbreaking illness I don't know much about that um, and then she meets a guy named Ben who comes from Britain and he is just trying to look for escape booze mischief and sex minimum commitment maximum fun anything to avoid returning back home and I think him and Riley me and she's determining whether or not to tell him about her illness or not I believe so either way super excited for this one definitely want to read this very soon because it just sounds amazing Amazing. I have a book from Penguin. It is Four Dead Queens by Astrid Solat. I don't know. This one comes out in February and I believe this is an epic fantasy about four dead queens. I'm just kidding. I don't know. I'm just assuming that's what it's about because of the title. An enthralling fast-paced murder mystery where competing agendas collide with deadly consequences. Four dead queens her heralds the arrival of exciting new YA talent. So this sounds like it's a debut novel which I'm always excited about and I'm really hoping that it's a good YA fantasy book. I have a few books from Epic Reads. The first one is Broken Things by Lauren Oliver. This is all about like it reminds me of that Slenderman game or like the news happened with those girls that did something to their friend because of Slenderman. If you've heard of the news, I'm sure you've heard of that because holy crap, that was intense. But it's about these three girls that are really obsessed with this book. I forget what the book is called. The Way It's a Love Lord. And they like write the sequel and they're all obsessed with it. And basically one of the, two of the friends take the other friend into the woods and they murder her. And yeah, only the thing is, is that those two friends did not do it. So this takes place years later and they're finally like trying to figure out what happened happened to the third friend who really killed her because it wasn't them even though everyone else thinks it was so I've already started this I've kind of taken a break from it because I'm not loving it so you'll have to let me know how you feel about it they sent me is this is what it feels like by Rebecca Barra which basically is the cutest cover ever this is all about like a music festival I believe it's about a girl that wants to win this Sun City original so she teams up with like these other girls to start a band together to win this competition which sounds amazing I'm all for forming bands and winning competitions sounds like an amazing book like I said, I'm going through these super fast because this is a long video already. Then I have some Christmas reads already. So if you don't know already, I am hosting a Christmas holiday readathon in December. Um, I haven't said much about it other than the fact that it's taking place from December 3rd to 9th. Look out for the official announcement in the next couple weeks on this channel. I'm having some lovely co-hosts run it with me and it's going to be a really fun time. So just stay tuned if you want to participate. I would love for you to do so. It's my first time ever like hosting a readathon. So I'm extremely nervous, but I'm extremely excited because I love some holiday reads. So first up, I have One Day in December by Josie Silver. I got sent this by Crown Books and this book sounds like so amazing. It's about a girl named Lori who doesn't believe in love at first sight and then she meets eyes with this guy um, like on the bus on Christmas on a December day and then she's like thinks it's never gonna happen again and then she runs into him at a Christmas party only he's with his girlfriend and basically it says what follows for Lori, Sarah, and Jack which are all three of these people I think the her friend and her the guy that she like 
fell in love with immediately when she saw him. It's 10 years of friendship, heartbreak, roads not taken, and destinies reconsidered. One day, one day in December is a joyous, heartwarming, and immensely moving love story or reminder that fate takes turns along the route to happiness. Sounds like an amazing holiday read. I mean, I think you already tell what I'm going to read for this readathon. Then I have Snow in Love, which is four stories, ones by Melissa De La Cruz, Nick Stone, Amy Freeman, and Casey West. I got sentenced to from Scholastic. This is kind of like a lot of like holiday tales where it's like f four stories in one by these authors so it's going to be freaking adorable because a lot of those authors are amazing and lastly i have from power books is the white christmas inn by colleen wright excuse the horrible sticker can't get it off got like a new england inn and a girl is trying to finish her book and then she can't and then she meets a guy and it just sounds christmasy i mean that's all i need to know when i read a christmas book it's going to be christmasy and romantic and i'm sold <laughs> so yeah if you're excited for the readathon, let me know. I would love to hear because I hope some of you guys participate. Um, next up, I have a lot of books from, I have a few books from Fierce Reads. First up, I have Famous in a Small Town by Emma Mills. This one comes out in January. Don't know much about it. It's a story about long hidden truths and what it really means to come home. And I don't, I've only read one Emma Mills book before and enjoyed it. It's just kind of your quintessential YA contemporary books that make you feel warm inside. So cannot wait to read this. Comics Will Break Your Heart by Faith Aaron Hicks. This one comes out in February and this is all about like I'd say a Romeo and Juliet only like in comics like this girl likes to write comics and I don't know much about it other than like it's got to deal with comics and I think she meets a guy who's like a rival to her comic or something like that I don't know it sounds adorable sorry I'm not giving you more details forgive me the, uh, last the last one I have from Fierce Read is The Beauty of the Moment by oh my goodness I'm not going to try to pronounce that because I'm going to I'm going to really butcher it and I apologize so it's by this author the cover looks amazing I love how it's like a girl and drawings as well this is about a girl named Susan who is trying to be a really good girl and she meets a guy named Malcolm who is the bad boy and I think they kind of fall in love and it sounds amazing and adorable and what more could you want. I have a celebrity memoir and I have This Will Only Hurt A Little by Busy Phillips. Busy Phillips has been a lot on um I want to say like was it Cougar? Cougar Town with I forget who it was with Courtney Cox I never watched that show but I know Busy Phillips from Dawson's Creek because yes I love Dawson's Creek basically this is all about her life and things like that I love celebrity memoirs if I do read this which I hope to I'll probably listen to an audiobook because I feel like that's the way to go with celebrity memoirs because you get to hear their voice so really excited for that I love her humor and her personality so I hope this is going to be a great celebrity memoir next up I have a couple books from Atria the first one is Watching You by Lisa Jewell which comes out in December I have already read this is an adult mystery thriller all about like this neighborhood in England on the hill and like everybody watches each other and a murders happen at the beginning and you're trying to figure out what happened it's kind of like big little lies where the murders in the background and you're just really focusing on learning about these characters I really enjoyed it it was my first Lisa Joel book so if you know of any good ones by her I would love to hear what you think um then the other one they sent to me is Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield Diane Setterfield also wrote the 13th tale which I've heard really good things about here's what the cover looks like in case you're wondering this is about like a girl that is rescued from a wintry river that runs through a village older than memory and then what happened to her who is she to the parents that the parents of the child kidnapped two years previously she is their daughter um, another village family they think that she is their daughter of their estranged son left to die by a suicidal mother not found or is she the daughter of a man named quietly a man who comes and goes without warning so basically it's a book all about like where this girl belongs like who are her parents we don't know I've heard really good things about the 13th tale if you think I like this I would love to hear because I'm very intrigued by it but I don't know if it's up my alley. The last stack of books I have are from book boxes. So the first one is from Uppercase, Blanca and Roja by Anna Maria Miklamore. This is about these two sisters, these Del Cine sisters, I forget how to pronounce their last name. And basically their family has a curse upon them by swans. And every time there are two daughters within um, this family, which happens every time, one of the daughters gets taken by the swans like she turn it gets turned into the swan so basically this is about two sisters and the time is coming soon that one of them is going to get taken by the swans and so they're trying to avoid that i've started this book i've stopped it because i've just 
I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it quite yet because I feel like I really want to love her writing, but I just can't get into it. So I'm feeling it might be like a case of The Raven Boys by Maggie Seawater where I have to push myself through the first 100 pages and then I'm just going to fall in love with it. So if you've read this book, I would love to hear your thoughts about it because I want to love it. I mean, the writing's beautiful, but somehow I just can't get into it. Then I have Alcree. Alcree had two books in their box. The first one is Pride by E.B. a Boy. This is a Pride and Prejudice retelling. I've already read this and really enjoyed it. This in the Austin Scent Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. This is the first book in a new series. It's like all about this dragon, I believe, and like a curse. Uh, yeah, a dragon was summoned to, to grant a single terrible wish, and the land of Iguacha was plunged into an age of darkness and chaos. Sounds amazing. I've read some of her books before, so I need to get on it. Then I have my two book of the month picks. The first one is Winter in Paradise by Elaine Heldebrand, which I've heard amazing things about this author. Never read one of her books. They, basically, this is like about a vacation, and I think like a death happens or something so it's like a murder mystery but a holiday murder mystery i don't know but i'm going to save it for the readathon because it's wintry still and christmasy so i need to do more research on it then i have the most beautiful cover ever and that is the clockmaker's daughter by kate morton look how beautiful this cover is i can't get over it this book takes place in the freaking 1862 which are not my books at all and i don't know anything about it other than that it's about a clockmaker's daughter I'm horrible. I know. So there you have it. Those are all the books I acquired in October. Like a lot. I was not expecting this. Either way, I'm super grateful for all the books I've gotten. If, As always, if you've heard of any of these books, please let me know because I stare at my TBR shelf in wonderment sometimes of what should I read next. And I would love to hear your guys' opinions on any of these books, whether you think I should read them or not. I would love, love, love your feedback. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.